Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Halloween special! Woohaha! Halloween time! Ha ha ha! Hanging out in the studio with Rafi! Hola, you amazing artist! Well, today we are going to tell our spooky ghost stories for Halloween! Our very spooky story! When we did the live stream, we had mentioned that uh, I had some paranormal experiences and some of you were like, we want to hear your paranormal experiences! So, what better time than Halloween. Also known as Sam Hain, the time when the veil between this world and the next is at its thinnest, oh. and beings on either side of the veil get together and have treats and parties. Yeah, they have treats and parties. Clee actually has her own paranormal experience, and she's going to start with that one. Yeah, I have a spooky story which is shorter and probably a lot less spooky than your story. I don't want to follow your spooky story, so I'll go first. Okay. When I was about 16 or 17, I was living with my dad. And I'll just go ahead and say, my dad, his house is a little spooky to begin with. It's old. It's kind of drafty. There's things that go bump in the night. I would go out for coffee and stay out kind of late with my friends. I think I was about 17 when this happened. And I should start by saying the house is two stories. It's a four bedroom house. And I slept in the master bedroom uh, where my grandparents slept. My dad didn't want to sleep in the master bedroom. He inherited the house. The master bedroom was empty. Next door to me, we were actually renting a room to a lady named Peggy. She rented a room from us. And then the room adjacent to her room was my dad's room. Peggy had been there for a while and I'd become friends with her and she was kind of like part of the family. And I would go out late at night for coffee with my friends, you know, cause I was 17 <laughs> and that's what you did. And I came home from hanging out with my friends probably around midnight or so one night and I pretty much just went straight to bed and crashed. Now, here's a detail that's important to the story. Okay. I'm 17, so I had makeup on. Like, I had all the makeup on, you know, because teenagers and makeup. Right. So mascara and the whole nine yards. I didn't wash my face before bed. Don't judge me. I was a teenager. Because you were a teenager, yeah. <laughs> so I went to bed with full makeup on and crashed out. Well, apparently, in the middle of the night, Peggy woke up because her room was next to mine. And we all slept with our doors closed because, you know, that's just how you do. Yeah. And Peggy woke up out of a sleep because she heard crying, like not light crying, like sobbing and wailing coming from the master bedroom where I slept. So apparently this kept Peggy up for several hours that evening. And I didn't actually experience anything <laughs> but the next morning I came downstairs and Peggy was having coffee and I sat down at the kitchen table and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm totally fine. Why? She's like, it seemed like you had a rough night. I was like, me? No. Didn't have a rough night. What are you talking about? She said, well, I heard you crying. I was like, I wasn't crying. She said, well, I heard crying coming from your room. So she proceeds to tell me this story that she woke up to this loud sobbing crying that she went out into the hallway that she was sure it was coming from my bedroom that she wanted to make sure so she actually pressed her ear up against my bedroom door and what she heard was a woman sobbing and crying and talking and then she heard a man's voice in your room in my room okay and she assumed that I was having a hard time and that I was crying and talking to my dad. My dad was fast asleep in his room. And you were... And I was out. I was were, not crying. You were fast asleep in your room? I sleep hard. <laughs> I sleep really heavy, but I would also like to point out that I don't really make a lot of noise. I don't talk in my sleep. No, you don't talk in your sleep. I, We've been together for 10 years. You definitely do not talk in your sleep. I don't sleep with a TV on. I didn't back then. I didn't have a radio on. There's no way you could hear the neighbors and any sound coming from the neighbors. And she had her ear pressed against my door. Wow. My dad, who's a light sleeper, right. 
also experienced nothing. So uh, you weren't the one wailing and crying? No, and I knew this because I didn't wash my face before going to bed and my mascara was perfectly intact. <laughs> I had not been crying in my sleep or making any kind of wailing sounds. <laughs> so something was in your room wailing and crying. And, and talking having, to a man. Uh, talking to a man and you just slept right through it. I slept right through it. I'm a really heavy sleeper. I have literally slept through a train crash, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> now, my dad's house has always had a kind of spooky vibe, like I said. Yep. The bottom floor, like the living room and communal areas are pretty neutral, but the upstairs has always felt a little weird. And, like, it is. It maybe is. Maybe even a little heavy heavy and like growing up I always felt like I could never go down the staircase at a normal pace because I always felt like something was behind me so I would always run down the stairs. Yeah there there is a weird vibe in your house in the upstairs you know like when you walk into a room and there was just an argument how there's that heaviness there um, that's what it feels like upstairs in that house. Yeah, so yeah. apparently there were ghosts in the master bedroom having crying sessions and conversations. While you slept. And it woke up Peggy in the middle <laughs> of the night. So my story, and I'm going to try to make this quick because we lived in that house for about a year and a half and a lot of stuff happened. So I'll just give you the Cliff Notes version of what happened. My parents bought this house and I didn't know at the time because I was maybe about six or seven years old and the, the house had been abandoned in the neighborhood for several years. They bought it, they remodeled it, and we moved in. And while, while we had moved in, the basement was still being remodeled. And my first experience in that house was uh, roller skating around in the basement with one roller skate because I had a friend there and only one pair of roller skates. So we had one roller <laughs> skate on one foot and we were just going back and forth through the basement. You were sharing the skates and making it work. Yeah, because it was a cool tile floor. Somehow felt like, um, like I had been pushed a little bit. Now, I can't say that I had been pushed, but I was very aware of this pile of wood that was there with big giant nails sticking through it. As one should be. Yeah, and this uh, pile of wood ended up um, having one of its nails protrude right through my foot. And I remember standing there being like, ah, looking at my foot with this nail sticking out of it. That's horrible! Yeah, and beyond that pile of wood was a room I didn't know at the time, but my dad was having a hard time getting the floor painted uh, because the, the paint just wouldn't stick. It would start to crack and, and it would peel off of the floor. Well, I didn't know that there was a pentagram painted on the floor because I was six or seven. So oh, you don't yeah. know those things when you're six or seven. You just see this weird design on the floor and you're like, well, that's weird. What is that? Well, it was a pentagram, so he couldn't paint over it, so he decided to just cover it with a rug, and that was one of the guest downstairs bedrooms. So your dad tried to paint over it, and what? It just, it would, it would, it wouldn't stick to it. So he was like, I don't know. I don't know, and he just <laughs> covered it with a rug. The thing was that, like, nothing, there was no feeling or anything, because, like I said, I was six or seven, so we moved in, and uh, a lot of weird stuff started to happen, where it was just little things like the stereo downstairs would go off in the middle of the night or during the day when nobody was there uh doors would slam by themselves you would walk into like cold spots like areas that were very cold or areas that were very hot and humid um, you would also walk into spots that smelled like rotting flesh oh. you know um that's that's not okay. Yeah, like it had like a very sulfur, like gross smell, and it was usually very hot or very cold in that spot. Um, and you always felt like somebody was watching you. And um, so things started off like that little by little, like I would feel like my blankets being tugged a little bit in the middle of the night. And I would see my, my stuff on my shelves kind of like move a little bit back and forth. Um, and so it would scare me, but at the same time, I wasn't sure if it was my imagination or not. You see things and you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of weird, but it's got to be my eyes playing tricks on me. The longer that we lived there, 
Um, out of all of us, I would say that my mom was the one that took the brunt of everything because um, she was she was kind of sad at the time and I think that she she really got the brunt of everything, but that's her story. I'm not gonna tell her story. What I could tell you is my perspective of what happened. My brother was born um, a few months later and he had his crib adjacent to my room. So with my door open, I could see his crib. And in the middle of the night, while I'd be laying there, you could hear the of the little thing cranking up, you know, the little music player in the crib. The crib mobile? Yeah, it would just like crank up and then the music would start playing in the middle of the night. Now this started to freak me out because this was something that was very tangible. It wasn't like, oh, it's my eyes playing tricks on me. It was like, you could hear the sounds and my brother was a newborn. So definitely not him. Not him. And we're talking about the 1980s when your brother was born. So not like digital. No, no, there were sensors. there were no remote controls or anything like that. This was like, you had to crank that sucker up. So that was the first thing that started to really become tangible for me. Eventually things started to really like get much more heightened, like doors start to really slam and and uh, a lot of a lot of like sounds would come you'd hear the billiard balls like banging back and forth in the basement you started to hear voices um things started to get much much more intense where it was like oh okay this isn't my imagination this is something that's really going on there was one point where we were gonna go fishing and my mom uh felt something uh float up into her hand and it was a drawing of a boat, a very crude drawing of a boat with three little stick people in it and then one tiny little stick figure at the bottom of like the water. Oh, that's super creepy. So like there were, there were things like that going on. The more that things were happening to my mom, the more uh, she started to change as well. So like there came a point where she was like, Rafi, come here. She started to see this uh, this black cat. Now I couldn't see the black cat, but she saw this black cat, and she described it as this black cat that every time she saw it, it looked like it was stretching out of its skin. That's not cool. No. So like, and it, and she would t call me into a room, and she'd be like, "Do you feel it? Do you smell it? Do you see it?" And like you'd smell this like putrid, rotting flesh smell where she was pointing at and of course at the time i was like man what's wrong with my mom she's like farting and making me smell it or whatever <laughs> i'm like sitting there trying to figure it out and this has been going on for a year and we were all sitting in the kitchen and my mom finally i don't know who she was talking to but she was like leave me alone leave me alone leave me alone and this glass that was sitting on the kitchen table just went flying up and smashed into the wall just psh smashed into the wall and we had friends over and when that happened they very quickly just walked out the door got in their car and drove away moments later we had about six or seven parakeets and one by one you could hear them just drop to the bottom of their cage you actually had pets die dead yeah again i'm six or seven i'm like i have no idea what's happening but to some extent or another, so much crazy stuff was happening in that house, and I was so young that it was almost normal. Mm -hmm. You know, like it became like, oh, this is just this is just how everybody lives life. And there came a point where I knew that there was something dark and nasty and sinister, but um, I believed my little seven-year-old self that it couldn't hurt me as long as I knew that I was protected and that I wasn't afraid of it. So I would do things like I'd be playing my Magnavox Odyssey because this is before like even Atari. Uh, I would play my Magnavox Odyssey and I'd be sitting there playing this video game and the TV would shut off and then I would get up and turn the TV on and you know say like leave him leave me alone and I'd try to you know, go back to playing my game and then the TV would turn off and I'd get up and I would see all these like shadows in my periphery like you know, like when you see somebody move in your periphery and you look and, and but there'd be nobody there. Mm -hmm. So I'd get up and turn on the TV and then the door would slam and I would get up and open my door, 
all indignant, you know, and, and the door would slam again and I'd open the door and I would say, I'm not afraid of you. You can't do anything to me. Da, 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 da. Stuff like that was going on. And I finally got fed up and I went into the basement because the basement was like the main place that that was the main place where you could feel all the stuff. And so much so to the extent that uh, one of the stories was that my dad said, go downstairs, there was another kitchen area downstairs. He said, go downstairs and bring me the can of blah, blah, blah. And I went downstairs and there were hundreds, if not thousands of big fat flies just flying around the basement. And it creeped me out and I ran back upstairs. Well, yeah. And I was like, there's flies, there's flies. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about? There's no flies. And my mom was like, come with me. We're going downstairs, da, da, da. We go downstairs and she sees the flies. And then she comes running upstairs and she, you know, calls to my dad. And my dad is like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he walks downstairs and there's not a single fly in the entire basement. And so like there, there was stuff, there was stuff that would go on in the basement. Like that's where the billiard balls would move around, the entertainment center, the TV would just spark on, the stereo would turn on full blast in the middle of the night. You'd see glasses just tip over off of the bar area. So seven year old, you decided you were going to the basement to deal with it? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna go into the basement cause I was gonna prove to it that I wasn't afraid. So I go into the basement, decide not to turn on the lights by the way. Cause I was like, if I turn on the lights, then I'm showing that I'm afraid. So I went into the basement and I stood there in the middle of this dark basement and screamed up, I'm not afraid of you. And then the billiard balls started clanking and I screamed again, I'm not afraid of you. And then the stereo came on full blast. And then I screamed again, I'm not afraid of you. And then the TV went off and then doors started slamming and I could have sworn that there was wind, even though I can't guarantee that. That's probably just in my imagination, remembering that. But it felt like there was just all of this sound and all of this commotion going on around me. And somewhere in my mind, I knew that whatever it was was trying to scare me because the moment that it scared me, um, it would have control over me. It would have power. And I wasn't going to give it to it. So I just stood there, clenched my little tiny fist, and in my Mickey Mouse voice that I had at the time, just screamed, I am not afraid of you, and just kept screaming that over and over. And then suddenly everything just stopped. From that moment forward, um, all the commotion and all the stuff that was going on in my room and, and any of the things that I had experienced um, just kind of stopped. They, they still happened, I would say, but just it was less, less of it was happening towards me. And then at that point, I think that that's the point where I became really protective of my brother mm -hmm. because of whatever it was, was kind of, you know, my, my brother was a little new, newborn and he would get scratches on his body uh, that would just appear out of nowhere. So then I became very protective of my brother. Yeah, I would imagine so. And uh, obviously a lot, a lot of other things happened in that house, but uh, pretty much um, around that time, uh, eventually I just got, I got shipped off to live in Puerto Rico with my grandparents. And I lived there for a year while they took care of everything in that house. And uh, I think what ended up happening was that they just moved out. They, mo they left everything there all our clothes, toys, pool tables, everything that was there, they just left it and just- Not worth it, start nope, over. Just left one night and left everything there and they were out. That is the spooky story from, from Rafi's childhood. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've talked to your dad about the stories and he doesn't- uh, No, he doesn't like talking about he it. He doesn't like it at all. He no. definitely does not like talking about it. So. So yeah, so that's my story, you guys. That's that's at least part of it. There's there's a lot more, but it's I mean it's a year and a half worth of stuff, and stuff happened in that house every single day. It wasn't like you know it happened every once in a while. It was a daily occurrence. So you were brave. I was seven year old brave. Yeah. You know I was you know and it's interesting because that had an impact on me with facing stuff like that now as an adult. Like I'm not afraid of any stuff like that because it can't hurt me. You know, at least that's where I'm at. And so far that's been true for me throughout my entire life. So those are our spooky Halloween stories. Spooky Halloween stories. We hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a happy and safe Halloween, you guys. We totally love you. Yep. 
Adore you. Adios. Good evening. Total awesome